till now we have studied uh, introduction to the rotor dynamics and uh, even in the previous lectures we have seen a lot of information regarding the rotor dynamics history state of the art so during the previous three lectures you will find that uh, i have given uh, overall overview of the this particular subject and you may now aware of various kind of uh, words or phenomena which are uh, being used in rotor dynamics and now from present lecture we'll start uh, very simple models of uh, rotors to analyze some of the phenomena of the rotor dynamics so present uh, module is on simple rotor models with rigid bearing so this is the overall overview of the lecture i will be covering so i will be taking initially the single degree of freedom uh, rotor model and then i will move it to two degree of freedom uh, jeffcott rotor model which is very uh, important model to understand uh, various rotor dynamics phenomena and overall in this lecture we will see various concepts like critical speed uh, orbit of the rotor or uh, unbalanced response or uh, phase of the unbalance and uh, with this uh, let us take one single degree of freedom rotor model in which let us say there is a rigid shaft and there is a heavy disc on that and this particular rotor is supported on some flexible bearing which is having stiffness property let us say kb the rotor mass is m this is one particular model in which you can able to see that these uh, bearings they are parallel so the effective stiffness which this particular rotor is experiencing is 2 kb if we take another model in which uh, we take the bearings as rigid if we take another model in which let us say the shaft is flexible which is at mid span we are mounting one rotor having mass m the mass of the shaft is let us say negligible as compared to the mass of the disc at the center and bearings are rigid and the stiffness the transfer stiffness of this particular shaft from strength of material concept we can able to write it as 48 ei by l cube where l is the length of the shaft e is the young's modulus and i is the area second moment of area and for a circular shaft we know i is pi by 64 diameter is to 4 so the stiffness for this particular case uh whatever the effective stiffness of the or uh, which this particular disc is experiencing from the shaft is this much we can have other systems like a flexible shaft with a cantilever a beam model in which the stiffness is of the shaft is there massless shaft but disc is having some mass in this particular case the stiffness is given as 3 ei by l cube in this particular case uh, we are trying to see in all these three cases we are trying to see up and down motion of these masses that we call it transverse vibration another case we can have a cantilever shaft with a disc but let us say we are 
trying to analyze the torsional oscillation of this that means twisting of the disc about its own axis. In this particular case the stiffness k t will be given by a different expression from strength of material we can able to write like g j by l which is nothing but t by theta this is the stiffness. In this particular you can able to see that uh, these are all single mass model and all these models we can able to represent by a mass and a effective stiffness of the support or of the shaft mass is having value m and we are having some kind of displacement in vertical direction which will be time dependent. In if we consider the previous model let us say uh, the first one or second one uh, we can have uh, some kind of uh, centrifugal force due to the unbalance of the mass and that we can able to apply on this particular mass like m e omega square sin omega t where m is the mass of the rotor e is the eccentricity omega is the spin speed of the shaft and t is the time because this particular unbalanced force changes with harmonic. So, that is why we can able to write as sin omega t this is the external force which the mass is experiencing from the unbalance. Now, this particular single degree of freedom model we we can able to obtain the equation of motion of this by drawing the free body diagram of the mass. Let us say this is the mass uh, in which elastic force will be acting downward which will be opposite to the motion. If motion is upward this will act downward let us say centrifugal uh, this external force is acting here gravity effect we have neglected here we are assuming that whatever the reference we are choosing is from static equilibrium position. Apart from this there will be inertia force which will be acting uh, now we can able to write the force balance sum of external force is equal to mass into acceleration external forces are the elastic force which is opposite to the motion. So, it will be minus plus unbalanced force which is in upward direction. So, it will be positive is equal to the inertia force and this can be written in very standard form like this. This is the equation of motion generally we write as equation of motion short form like this. So, uh, we have seen that uh, several uh, single mass rotor system can be modeled uh, by a spring and a, a mass single mass system like uh, I can give an example of practical example of a engine. Uh, engine which is having reciprocating uh, parts that give some kind of harmonic motion uh, excitation and if that engine is mounted on some kind of uh, uh, flexible support that particular flexible support can have some kind of effective stiffness the whole engine we can able to consider as a single mass and the model which we have discussed can be used to analyze uh, that kind of engine system which is supported on flexible shaft 
that is a very simple model, but it will give some kind of uh, informations like uh, we, we can able to analyze the natural frequency of the system, also we can able to analyze the resonance condition of the system as we will be discussing in this particular lecture. So, this particular equation of motion which we obtain, we can able to solve first maybe the free vibration part of that, that is by putting the external force is equal to 0. In this particular case, because this is a free vibration, we expect the motion should be uh, some kind of simple harmonic motion with frequency equal to the natural frequency of the system and this capital Y is the amplitude of the free vibration omega nu t omega n f is the natural frequency t is the time here this is natural frequency this is not the spin speed of the shaft because at present we have neglected the unbalanced force. So, frequency is corresponding to the natural frequency. If we take double derivative of this, we will get this expression and we can able to substitute this in the equation of motion. So, we will get sin omega t will be outside, sin omega n of t will be outside, because this term cannot be 0 for all value of time. So, the term within the bracket we should equate it to 0 and y is common. So, we will be having m terms will be there in every places is equal to 0, y is common. So, it will uh, y ca amplitude cannot be 0. So, we should have this term 0. This is called frequency equation. I will repeat, I uh, will repeat some part. Uh, these two expression can be written in the equation of motion to get this expression the sin omega n f t and y is common. Now, you can able to see that this term cannot be 0. So, we need to put the terms within the bracket equal to 0. So, that will give us this is called frequency equation and from here we can able to get the natural frequency of the system as root k by m and you can able to see that frequency cannot be negative. So, the negative value is having no meaning. So, only positive value to be retained. This is the natural frequency of the system which is nothing but square root of stiffness, effective stiffness of the system divided by the mass of the rotor. Now, we will uh, analyze the force vibration due to the unbalance, which we neglected in the previous case. In this particular case, when we we choose the solution, the frequency will be spin speed, because now unbalance is giving us the spin speed as the forcing frequency. So, the response should also should have the same frequency. Uh, here, if you take double derivative of this, we will get 
this expression. This can be substituted in the equation of motion. Now, our aim is to obtain the amplitude of vibration. So, we can able to solve this equation for y capital Y. Or here sin omega t will be there that will cancel this particular term because this amplitude is not time dependent. So, here we will be having this expression. In this particular case, uh, if you see, uh, because there is no damping in the system, so we are not considered the phase difference between the response which is y and the force. Force is having sin omega t term, response is also having sin omega t term. If damping is there, then we to need to take consider the damping phase in the response. So, in that particular case, the response will be sin omega t minus phi. Now, this particular amplitude will give us the actual response with time using this expression. Okay. This particular amplitude is having importance. So, let us see this particular uh, amplitude how it varies with frequency. So, I am again writing that expression. If we divide by omega square in numerator and de denominator, we will get also I am dividing by mass. So, this can be written as I will repeat this slide again. Uh, this particular amplitude we can able to write, I am writing that expression again here. So, we can able to define a non dimensional amplitude as y by eccentricity, which is given by this. Now, we can define a expression frequency ratio as omega by omega n f, where omega is the spin speed, omega n f is the natural frequency, which is given as root k by m. With this, we can able to write this particular expression as omega bar square divided by 1 minus omega bar square by rearrangement of the equation. Now, if we want to plot this particular response that is with respect to frequency ratio, the amplitude ratio. So, if we plot this we will get a very high amplitude at omega bar is equal to 1, because in this expression this denominator will become 0 and we expect very high amplitude of vibration. And if you increase frequency further, this will go asymptotically to equal to value 1. So, this particular amplitude ratio will be 1. Why it is 1? Because this y bar when we are putting limit omega bar is equal to infinity, you can able to see from 
the above expression that can be written as 1 by 1 by omega bar square minus 1 that is equal to minus 1. So, basically I have drawn the more mod of that. So, the value is mod of that is positive 1. So, you can able to see uh, what is the meaning of this. Here, if we put the y bar as y by e, it will give y is equal to eccentricity. So, you will see that at very high speed for the single mass rotor system, the amplitude becomes equal to the eccentricity and uh, this the sign is minus. So, let us see what is the meaning of this. So, from the this analysis we have seen that uh, when we are increasing the speed of the rotor from 0 speed at the frequency ratio 1 the resonance condition take place uh, that is very dangerous condition. Generally, we avoid the operating generally we have uh, uh, avoid the operating speed to fall at the natural frequency because that is a resonance condition where high level of amplitude take place uh, because we did not consider the damping in the system. So, the amplitude at the resonance was infinity, but in practice always damping will be there to restrict the amplitude to some finite value. And also we have seen that once we are increasing the speed to very high speed uh, theoretically infinite speed uh, practically at uh, uh, above the uh, critical speed may be 3 to 4 times, we will see that the rotor vibrations will be very less and that will be uh, that will be equal to the whatever the vibrations will be taking will be equal to the eccentricity of the rotor. So, let us see this particular thing how it happens. So, earlier we have seen that the volume of the shaft about its bearing axis and when we are operating below the critical speed that is frequency ratio 1, the unbalanced force is toward the outward direction and uh, this is the amplitude y which we are talking about in the previous analysis, but the same thing when we have cross the critical speed this particular unbalanced force comes toward the negative direction. We have seen that the y, the y becomes negative at very high value of this. So, in this particular case the rotor if we, if we see the rotor, rotor is having center of rotation this one center of gravity this one, this is the eccentricity. So, C when it is displacing that is the displacement of the rotor. If C is C is displaced by minus E, uh, what is the meaning of that? That means, the center of gravity will try to come at the rot uh, rotational axis of the uh, system. So, it will the the disc will rotate about the center of gravity and that is why we are having this particular uh, less vibration once we are crossing the critical speed. Now, uh, let us extend this particular analysis which we uh, in which we have taken the mass and the spring. Now, we will consider a system in which the damping is also present. 
So, in this particular case let us say we are considering a, a simple rotor system which is having rigid shaft and a mass. This is supported on a spring and mass spring and damper system. Let us say the damping is viscous damping and the coefficient is C, stiffness is half k, k by half k by 2, here C by 2 k by 2, this is m. So, in this particular case you can able to see from three body diagram uh, of the rotor system will be having if we have displacement in this direction will be having k by 2 y and c by 2 y dot because viscous damping is gives us a force which is proportional to the velocity here also because we have considered the bearing as symmetric and inertia force will be opposite to this. So, the equation of motion if we balance all the forces and moment we will see that this will be minus k y that is from both the bearing minus c y dot from both the bearing. There is no uh, unbalance let us say. So, for external force due to unbalance is 0 should be equal to inertia term. So, basically this equation is like this. So, this equation of motion is very popular equation of motion of a spring mass damper system and to to solve this for free vibration obviously, we need to assume the solution let us say we are assuming as S t. If we take derivatives twice once we will get this another derivative we will get S square y E S t and if we substitute this in the equation of motion we will get this expression where y is common is equal to 0 E s t is also common. Uh, these expressions cannot be 0 otherwise our solution there will not be any motion. So, we need to put terms within the bracket to 0 and this is called frequency equation or characteristic equation. From this we can get the uh, frequency of vibration. So, let us solve this equation. In so, this is the equation of frequency equation we got from the spring mass damper system we can able to solve for s because this is a quadratic equation. So, we will get two roots and the solution will be of this form. And if we substitute this in the assumed solution let us say I am writing this as exponential and within the bracket these terms. Now, this can be written as we can able to separate it out some of the terms like this and 
we can take the square root term separately. Now, you will see that <coughs> when we have this condition, which is inside the bracket this term, if this is negative, then we will be having the terms from this as sinusoidal terms, because once it is negative, we will be having complex to exponential raised to complex that will give us the sin and cosine terms. Uh, the first term, this one is you can able to see is having minus sign, uh, all other c and m are positive. So, this expression gives us a decaying is a decaying function and for this condition this is a harmonic function. And <coughs> for this case, we this particular case we call it as under damped system. which is generally the case and for this particular case let us see how the y will vary for under damped system if we want to plot the y t with respect to time uh, the decaying function which is the first term will be of this form and depending upon the initial condition we will be having the free vibration like this after some time it will decay. Now, you can able to see that in this particular plot, this is the time period and that remains same it should it, it does not change with time always this time period will be defined with respect to this. So, when we are working in the linear system when response is small always this will be the time period and the frequency will be one of by the time period this will be in the hertz. And this particular response as I mentioned this is called under damped system. In the previous case when there was no damping we expect the response plot will be simple harmonic it will it will not decay this time period always this time period will be same which is related with the natural frequency of the system okay uh, in the previous case if this particular condition is equ equal that means, uh, we have c by 2 m square is equal to k by m that is we call it as critically damped system. Damped system and the another case in which uh, c by 2 m square is more than k by m that is called over damped system and in this particular case let us see how the response will be for over damped system. In this particular case uh, the first term I will again go back to the expression here you can able to see when order system is there uh, we will or please cut this one for what is system we will be having a response like this there will not be any crossing of the response of 
from the zero line. So, after some time gradually if we are giving some disturbance to the system from here gradually it will come to the rest it will not cross there will not be any no oscillation will take place. This is for over dam system. For critically dam system also similar behavior is there in which gradually it comes to the rest and in and for a very special initial condition some time of for critical dam system it it may cross once only so this is a special uh, velocity initial condition we need to give by which it it can able to cross once How much time? <coughs> Ready? Now uh, we will uh, solve the force vibration of a single uh, mass spring mass damper system, and uh, for that, let us take uh, the equation of motion. color how to change I think color got changed no? okay. so I'll write the equation of motion. earlier we did not consider the forcing, but due to unbalance this kind of forcing can come into the system. So, for this particular case the response can be assumed as sin omega t, but now this time we need to consider some phase because damping is there in the system earlier this particular phase was not there because there was no damping in the system because when we are applying some force the response will lag behind by the force by this phase angle. Now, we can take the derivatives this will be positive. If you take double derivative, then it will become negative. Now, we can able to substitute this in the equation of motion. So, we can able to write like this omega t minus 5 and then the last term corresponding to the stiffness in the left hand side. This should be equal to the unbalanced force. Now, because now the expressions are in these forms we need to expand them these expressions we need to expand them and then we need to uh, separate the sin omega term and cos omega term. So, let us do that particular expansion of these terms in the next slide. So, m omega square y cos omega t cos phi plus sin omega t sin phi this was the first term the inertia term then from damping term we can have 
साइन ओमेगा टी कॉस फाइव माइनस कॉस ओमेगा टी साइन फाइव देन फ्रॉम द थर्ड टर्म इलास्टिक टर्म वी कैन एबल टू एक्सपैंड दैट एज कॉस ओमेगा टी कॉस फाइव प्लस साइन ओमेगा टी साइन फाइव इज इक्वल टू द अनबैलेंस फोर्स to it t and sin omega t terms so i'm first taking the cos omega t terms separately and i'm equating it to zero first term then from damping then from stiffness is equal to zero because right hand side there is no cos omega t terms then sin omega t term this is from inertia then from damping then from inertia uh, then from stiffness and here in the right hand side we have unbalanced force so we'll be having this term now you can able to see from first equation we can able to get the phase we can able to write this as whereas from second equation uh, we wish if we substitute this phase in the second equation uh, because it is containing sin phi so that can be written as sin phi because we know the tan phi from that sin phi we can able to write as cw by k minus m omega square plus cw square sin phi similarly cos phi we can able to write i'm writing in this next page cos phi can be written as these can be obtained from the tan phi and this cos phi and the previous sin phi terms can be written in the second equation so that uh, phi terms can be eliminated from the second equation that will give us the y and y finally should able to get of this form now you can able to see that <clears throat> this particular this is the amplitude which is amplitude of the vibration the response can be written as which is time dependent sin omega t because we took and the phi so phase we have obtained earlier and amplitude is given by this expression so the this particular response can be now obtain using this expression now we'll uh, plot these responses which we obtain in the amplitude and the phase and we'll see how they vary with the uh, frequency so if we plot the y with respect to omega typically uh, we'll be having at resonance will be having a uh, large amplitude but it will not be infinity now nearly at natural frequency it will be 
infinite, but as we will increase the damping, the maximum will occur slightly below the natural frequency. So, these are for different damping ratios. So, this is the increasing order of damping the response would like uh, would, would be seen like this there will not be 0 here at the corners. Uh, when we will see the phase let us say this is pi by 2 is pi. So, the phase would change for different damping like this even for high damping it will cross at the same point that is corresponding to the 90 degree phase uh, 90 degree phase always this will cross. So, this is increasing order of damping you can able to see even at uh, 0 damping this will come up to here then it will cross and it will go in this direction. So, this is corresponding to 0 damping. So, we will see that at here it is always the phase is crossing always at the uh, 90 degree and this is a particular characteristic of the critical speed at that location the phase between the force and response becomes uh, 90 degree. Can you take one example? minutes I can take one example I will spill over maybe 2 3 minutes. No? So, let us take one question a rotor has a mass of 10 kg the operational speed is 10 plus minus 1 radians per second what should be bond of effective stiffness of the shaft. So, that the critical speed should not fall within 5 percent of operating speed assume that there is no damping in the system. So, we know the mass of the system operational speed range is uh, that is 99 radians per second and 101 radians per second from this we can able to see. And if we see that the operational speed should have 5 percent uh, this this 5 percent the critical speed should not fall within the operating range of 5 percent. That means, the lower frequency would be So, the lower frequency safe frequency range will be 99 minus 1 percent of this that means 0 0.01. So, that will give us sorry 105 percent of that that will give us 94.05 radians per second. The upper limit that is 101 5 percent margin. So, we are giving this as 106.05 radians per second. So, the critical speed should not fall within this range. We need to design the stiffness such that uh, that means, the effective stiffness of the system should be as is given as 
because this is the natural frequency formula that is uh, from this we can able to see that the lower limit give will give us 10 kg into 94.05 square will give us the stiffness as 88.45 kilo newton per meter and if we see the upper range so that is again we can able to substitute this but in this particular case we will be having the frequency upper limit of the operating speed this much this will give us 112.5 kilo newton per meter. So, that means the natural frequency should not fall between range the previous one is 91 98.1 radians per second again I am re repeating this. So, that means the effective stiffness should not fall within the range 98.1 kilo newton per meter to 112.5 kilo newton per meter to avoid the resonance. So, if we are choosing the effective stiffness in this range uh, we will be meeting these requirements that the our operating the critical speed is not falling within the 5 percent of the operating speed to avoid the resonance. So, in this particular lecture we have seen through very simple single degree of freedom spring mass system and spring mass damper system uh, how the critical speed can be obtained, how the force response can be obtained and especially at the resonance condition how affects the damping in the system. Uh, we have seen that the at resonance the damping limits the amplitudes also it makes the phase 90 degree this particular phenomena we have seen it. The subsequent lecture will be taking more uh, complex model to analyze such single mass rotor systems. Mm -hmm.